Figure 38. Shu, standing on the ocean, upholds not the sky. Four places of the sun are represented subsequently some commentaries call these mysterious lions the morning and yesterday. Whereas others confused them with the two celestial lions, Shu and Tefanit, and accordingly, represented them as seated in bushes or as sustaining the sky. Figure 39. Shuhaka and the four pillars separating heaven and earth. The latter two gods, Shu and Tefanit, were mostly understood by the Egyptians as the ethereal space which separates earth and ocean from heaven. This function is especially clear with Shu, who is often represented as a man appraising the sky on his outstretched hands or holding one of the pillars of heaven. As the supporter of sky and sun, he can be pictured with a sun disk on his head or can even be treated as a solar god. Whether he was a son of the sun god, as was the most common acceptation, or was an emanation from the source of the gods, the abyss, which preceded the sun, was a theological problem. Fig.40. Tefanit. How the lioness Tefanit came to be associated with Shu as his twin sister and wife. Fan thus received the function of a goddess of the sky. 29 is uncertain. Perhaps her lion form, which never interchanges with human features, furnishes the explanation. Or the accidental neighborhood of the two gods, when they were once only local divinities, may account for it. Figure 41. The Nile, his wife Nikbet, and the ocean. The Egyptian texts speak rather of Tefanit as sending flaming heat, that is as solar, and describe her as a true daughter or eye of the sun god or as the disc on his head. The pictures likewise always connect her with the sun. As a female counterpart of Shu she can be identified with such goddesses of the sky as Isis. Whence in some places she is called the mother of the moon. But she is also termed mother of the sky, in other words, of not. And, contrary wise, daughter of the sky, that is of nut or hat or. She and her brother Shu are likewise named the two lions. Figure 42. Nyu U with the head of an ox. Occasionally the ocean, literally the great green, is obese like the Nile. As though he brought fertility, and once his spouse likewise is muity or muit. Usually, however, he is identified with Nyu U, or Nun, the god of the abyss. Originally the latter represented not only the dark, unfathomable waters which flow under the earth and can be reached in the south comma carrot i, e, at the source of the Nile. But also their continuation which surrounds the world as the all-encircling ocean. The ends of the ocean, disappearing in darkness and endless space, lead back to the subterranean waters. Figure 43. Nyu U, the father of the mysterious gods. Sends his springs to the two mysterious ones. Nyu U is ordinarily depicted in human form. Though occasionally he has the head of a frog and once that of an ox. When he is shown with two spreading ostrich feathers on his head, his later identification with the wise Tartachinan is implied. One very noteworthy mythological picture represents Nyu U, the father of the mysterious gods, emitting the two or four sources of all waters from his mouth while two gods, probably the southern and northern Nile, each receive a part of these streams and spit them out again. Figure 44. 
two members of the primeval Ogdode. For the ocean in human circular form, on the late attribution of the ocean to powers hostile to the sun and its identification with Apopseth, the question of the relationship and sequence of the principal parts of the cosmic structure and of the four elements was never solved in a way which met with general acceptation. At first the myth of the creation of the world may have existed in a number of local variants. Figure 45. He and he had lift the young sun, as Kepri, over the eastern horizon. In the new empire, the speculations regarding the state of the world before the creation symbolized this chaotic state by four pairs of gods, unogdoed. The males, as aqueous creatures, being represented with frogs' heads, and the females with the heads of serpents. Their names were Nu and Not, the abysmal forces, He Yu and He Het, or He Hut, endless space, Keku, or Kekui, and Kekit, or Kekut, darkness, Nu and Nit sultry air. On account of their number these eight parents or ancestors of the sun god were connected with Kmunyu, the city of eight, in Middle Egypt. And some priests made this, or its high field, the scene or beginning of creation. Figure 46. Unusual representation of the husband of the sky goddess. In reality, only the first pair, Nyu and Nut were the parents of the sun god according to the doctrine just set forth, but it was easy to transfer the cosmic personalities of the Ogdo to the daily birth of the sun, which represents He and He Het, in the function of Su and Tefanit, lifting the infant sun in the east, i.e., every morning. There seems to have been some uncertainty, however, whether the Nut of the Ogdode was the same divinity as the celestial goddess Nut, who bears the sun every day, or whether she was only the primeval sky or merely an aspect of the watery chaos, but the two personalities were probably identical. According to this theory, then, with Nut as the flood, on with the old water goddess Mu Ut, Mu It, Mu U, the father of the gods, begat the sun god. As a daily event, this act of creation once represents not as the heaven bending over the ocean, whose circular position seems to distinguish him from the earth god, who is pictured as lying flat. Figure 47. The sky goddess in double for RM and her consort. The later Egyptians do not seem to have understood who this male figure, passing the sun from west to east, was, and the same statement holds true of a very similar representation in the Temple of Philly, which sought to pregent the upper and the lower sky as distinct personalities bending over the male principle. It depicts the sun no less than eight times. Very soon the belief became current that the sun, the greatest of all cosmic forces, grew quite by himself out of the abyss as the god who begat or formed himself, and that he then created the space of air between heaven and earth, Shu and Tefanit, after whom heaven and earth, Keb and Not, themselves were brought into being. From these gods came the rest of the creation, including the new sun as Osiris. Or the sun god continued to create gods and finally produced men from his eyes, etc. Figure 48 The young sun in the lotus flowers. The double occurrence of the sun as Atomri and as Osiris in the Heliopolitan doctrine 
and the very ancient role of Shu as the separator of the two principal parts of the world. Again lead us to suppose that variants existed according to which the sun god took a later place in the creation. In a similar fashion we read in some texts that after growing in the ocean, or in the blue lotus which symbolizes it, the sun god climbed directly on the back of the heavenly cow, thus implying the pre-existence of heaven, air, and other elements, and of the earth as well. Figure 49. Knum forms children and Hekat gives them life. In any case, later theology no longer comprehended the abysmal nature of Knum when it sought to explain the tradition of his creatorship by an etymology from the root conum, to form like a potter, so that he became a potter god who once had made all beings, from gods to animals, on his potter's wheel and who still determined the shape of every newborn child, apparently creating it, or at least its stubble, in heaven before infant's birth. In conformity with this development Knum's later consort, Hekit, became a goddess of birth. Figure 50. Meskhanit. The sun and Osiris have four different Meskhanets, or birth goddesses. A symbolism which admits of various interpretations. With Osiris preferably of the four sources of the Nile with the sun of the sky, symbolized by the number four. The name Meskhanit can be explained as coincidence, happening, omen. That is as the coincidence of the omens accompanying birth, and thus determining destiny so that this divinity becomes a goddess of fate. It is not impossible that this etymology is the original one, and that the function of birth goddess was merely derived from it. Rina Nutet also is connected with birth and education. Fig.51 Sec 8, Thout, and Atom register a king's name on the celestial tree, placing the king within it. The star between the horns emphasizes this nature, but, Contrary to the custom of picturing all stars with five rays, this particular one has seven, a careful indication of a symbolism which we do not yet understand or which may possibly have come from Asia. As a goddess of fate, Sekhate sits at the foot of the cosmic tree, or, in other words, in the nethermost, southern, depths of the sky or or at the meet and place of the upper and lower sky. And there she not only writes upon this tree or on its leaves all future events, such as length of life, at least for the kings, but also records great events for the knowledge of future generations, since everything, past and future, as we have already seen, is written in the stars. Figure 52. The planet Saturn in a picture of the Roman period. Although the Egyptian priests claimed to be great astronomers, the planets, the stars who never rest, did not enjoy the prominence which they possessed in Babylonia. In no place did they receive special worship, and if three, or, originally, four, of them, were called manifestations of the same god, Horus. In his capacity of the ruler of the sky, it is extremely doubtful where their early times were Hutch concerned to distinguish them. Of course the morning star, which probably was once differentiated from the evening star, was always the most important of the planets. Carrot it was male being called the rising god, Neuter du R. Regarded as the nocturnal representative of the hidden sun god. 
It symbolized Osiris or his soul, the phoenix, Ben Yu, Bin. Or the renaissance Osiris as Horus III, while later it was also called the one who ferries Osiris, or who ferries the phoenix. Figure 53. Sothis Sirius. In the earlier period, the comparison of Sothis and Venus as daughter and wife of the sun god and mother of Osiris Sothis Sirius Horus is uncertain and can have existed only vaguely. Carrot the other planets are less prominent. Jupiter's name was later misread Horus. The opener of secrets, Upshitau, the original reading was Upish, the resplendent star. Or Horus, the resplendent, and also the southern star. Saturn is Horus. The bull, and Mars is the red Horus or Horus of the horizon, Harakti. It is somewhat surprising that Sebaguma Ker 7 has no connection with the wise thout, as we should expect from Asiatic and European analogues. And sometimes this star is actually dedicated to the wicked god Seth. Figure 54. Sothis, called Isis. The fixed stars are all gods or souls, and particular sanctity attaches to the never vanishing ones, i.e., to those stars in the northern sky which are visible throughout the year, for these stars as the crew of the solar ship. They also function as the body servants of the sun god, carrying arms in his service and acting as his messengers. In these children of Nut, or their groups the Egyptians fancied at the same time that the Sothis, called recognized various fields of heavenly flowers and plants and that these meadows formed the habitations of the blessed dead. Figure 55. Sothis and Horus Osiris connected. At the same time, they called the heavenly fields by such names as this field, which produces the gods, on which the gods grow according to their days every year. Notwithstanding the Egyptian belief that the gods manifested themselves in the appearance and wanderings of every star, only the most conspicuous of them played a part of much importance in religion. Figure 56. Dickens Stars from Dendera When portrayed in human form, she usually indicates that she is the companion of her neighbor, and son, or brother and husband, or father. Orion by lifting one arm like him. A noteworthy representation also shows her in association with, or rather in opposition to, Horus as the morning star, and thus in strange relation to this leader of the planets and ruler of the sky which we cannot yet explain from the texts. This same picture further blends her with a neighboring and later constellation. An archer goddess, because she holds a band arrows. Figure 57. Early picture of Orion. To divide the year the Egyptians used, in place of the zodiacal signs. The Deccan stars, marking on the sky 36 sections of 10 days each. The surplus of 5 epagomenal days being counted separately. 
This belt of stars began with Soptsothus, the dog star, the mistress of the year. In Greco Roman times, the zodiacal signs became very popular, and we find them pictured in many richly developed representations. Figure 58 The Double Orion. In the New Empire, we find also the idea of the two Orions, which is so richly developed in universal mythology as a year myth. These celestial twins appear united as in the picture here given or are separated. The Egyptians do not seem to have recognized that this idea corresponded with their own myth of Osiris Seth in many versions of universal mythology. In like manner, the probable original identity of Orion or his counterpart or double, Canopus, the steersman of the ship Argo. Dot carrot, with the ferryman of the lower world whose face is backward, or who looks backward was forgotten at an even earlier date. Figure 59. The Ferryman of the Dead. From the hieroglyph of a press which marks his name, later theologians inferred that he was an oil presser and master of the laboratory, a giver of ointment. But earlier texts described him rather as a butcher or as a cook. He is pictured in human form or with the head of an ox or of a lion. The latter apparently being the more original. In other words, Shesem seems to be the companion of the goddess Shesemtet, who likewise was probably lion headed. Her members once were thought to be represented in the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th decans. Figure 60. Constellations around the ox leg. The seven starred constellation of Ursa Major. Charles's Ween, popularly called the Great Dipper in the United States was only later fully identified with the wicked god Seth Tyfton, the adversary of Osiris. Yet even under its old names, the ox leg, or the club, the striker, Masecti, it was an ill-omened constellation. Although it belonged to the especially venerable indestructible stars, that is those visible during the whole year in the most remarkable region of the sky near the North Pole. Figure 61. Three later types of Ipit, the last as Queen of Heaven. Despite her horrible appearance, she is, in reality, beneficent and is a mistress of talismans. She affords protection against sickness and is preeminently helpful in childbirth. Whence she appears not only at the birth of the sun each morning, but, strangely enough, also at its death that evening. Accordingly, she is later called she who bears the sun. And is, therefore, Identified with Natoh as the head of Hathor Isis.